Okay, so in the previous video, we ended up getting our basic VR character set up. So obviously we have our motion controllers and same thing goes the headset we can move around. Now in this video, we want to add it. So for example, right now I'm using my left touchpad, the round circle right here to move around and nothing's happening. So we want to add some basic input so that way we can move forward, back, side to side. Now this is where you want to figure out or set up different ways to figure out what type of movement you want to have. So for example, I really like the way onward moves. You're not, well, I think it's the default way anyways. So basically the direction that your, this guy here, your left controller is pointing. So if I point straight and I try to walk forward, I go forwards. If I point my controller this way to the right and I walk forwards, well, I go this way to the right. It's kind of nice. I can actually show you which direction I'm pointing at. So that's the way I want to set this up, and maybe in the future I'll show you how to use your uh, headset kind of movement, or sorry, headset rotation as well to control this. But for now, that's how we're going to do it. So to begin, we're going to go to our tutorial character .h and .cpp, and as well as our VR character, that basically the one that comes with the first person template. We're going to go ahead and be lazy here and find the move forward and move right functions and just paste them right on in. So I'm going to make a protected section, paste them in, create their impl implementations, and then move on to the .cpp of that character and just copy the input, or sorry, the val the information that's inside of it here, like so. So we're going to change value to val, so that way it matches. And this essentially will allow us, well, as you can see by that comment, to move around. So this will only be working if we call it. However, you can see we are currently using the direction that we're moving as our own forward and right vector. So this one for move right is going to be get actor right vector not forward vector so when we move forwards well when we like it says when we call the move forward we are moving the direction that the actor is facing but if we turn ourselves or let's say we turn 90 degrees to the right in in the world like our real in real life well we're still going to be moving 90 degree we're pretty much going to be going straight left at that point because we're not using any of our real world rotations so we're going to have to fix this, but let's go ahead and continue binding up things like the input. So we're going to go ahead and just copy our setup player input component. It's the new public section. Setup player input component. And we're going to paste in the contents for that as well. Like so. And then I'm going to actually move this up. above all that and I'm going to change input component to player input component so that way it's specified we can remove some of these functions like this one we're going to comment out the reset VR for now we do not need the fire function and for right now we don't need jump either well actually we could keep jump and it works all the same so that's what we're going to do for now now we just want to change out a VR tutorial character with a tutorial VR character, which is our new character, like so. And then all we have to do is, well, we don't really need these either because we are in VR. So we're going to comment these out as well. And if we ever decide we want to use them or we need them for some reason, we can come back to it. So this might be useful for something such as smooth turning. So we could use our... Okay, uh, I think it's Pavlov uses snap turning as well. That's another option. I don't know if Onward does, but with the right um, wheel and on the Vive Wands anyways, you're able to kind of snap a certain degrees left or right based on if you push left or right. So we might come back to this and add some functionality for that with it. But I don't like the snapping so much. I kind of like the slow turn. However, now that I'm thinking about it, that might introduce a little bit more when it comes down to feeling nauseated if you have a slow rotation instead of just a snap. So anyways, that's all going to be stuff maybe later down the road. We don't know yet. Anyways, we have our move forward and our move right. So 
So as always, I'm just going to go ahead and create a constructor as well. Just to have, because I know we're eventually going to have to create one and make use of it. But we are pretty much good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and recompile and launch the game again. Or editor. Okay. Let's hit play and we can use WASD to move around. So currently I'm using W and I move left. I use A, I move back. I use D, I move forward. And S, I move right. So obviously if I turn my head this way, it all makes sense. But I'm rotated, so it's a little wonky. Now... Let's go to our project settings. We're going to look at some of our inputs. We're going to get input, axis mapping. We have move forward. Uh, we have the Vive trackpad Y and the Vive trackpad X. So let's give those actually a try real quick. So I'm moving, I'm using this little round dial and nothing's happening. Now there is something that is really not noted anywhere as far as I know, but yeah, let me actually load up the other project real quick, and I'll show you what I mean. So in my test project, if I go to settings, project settings, and our input, we have different names here. So for some odd reason, we have to kind of, I don't know what the end, suffix I think is the end, or yeah, I think it's suffix, our name here with underscore Y and underscore X to kind of illustrate which one. So I don't know why this is, but I'll show you the effect here in a second. So if we change this to, let's do move forward underscore, I can even type, underscore X. Here, let's do uh, just move underscore Y, and then move underscore X, like so. Save it. And replace these, so this is move underscore X. No, move underscore Y, I mean and then move underscore X. So hopefully I can just hot reload this and do I not have hot reload set up? Or live coding, I mean, I do not, I do now. Let's see if this works. Okay, now I hit play and let's see, are we gonna get a crash or what's going on? Nope, there we go. So as you can see now, I'm using my thingy here and I'm moving around with it. Even though I'm move forward, I move left, I move left and move back and that kind of stuff so it's still screwed up obviously so we need to change that but we have our you know our movement actually working due to the name change which i still don't fully understand why but you know it is what it is anyhow what we're going to do here is because we're derived from a vr character which i don't know if it's in it might be in vr base we have our controllers which are somewhere in this class. But right here, we have our left motion controller and our right. We want our left motion controller. So this is what we're going to use to basically dictate the direction that we move. So where we go to our get actor forward vector to move forwards, instead of moving the direction of our actor, we're going to go ahead and get our left motion controller and get the forward vector. We're going to do the exact same thing here for move right, except we're going to do left uh, motion controller and get right vector just like that. So that should allow us to move based upon the direction that our motion controller or real life controller is pointing. So if I'm standing straight and I'm pointing my controller in front of me, I should move forwards like so. If I try to go left, I go left, back, right. And if I turn this to the right and go forwards, I go right. So I'm going the direction of my controller. So I can walk right towards those three cubes there. Turn right around it and go. So it's completely dependent on the direction that I'm using my controller with, or pointing my controller. So that allows us to have our, you know, basic movement there. Now, obviously, as I mentioned before, there's other types you could do. Like, if you prefer having your head be what dictates the rotation, you know, the direction you're moving, you could use your headset's, obviously, rotation. Or better yet, your actual camera. So, for example, we could change this out 
with our, let's see, what do they call the camera here? Should be the VR replicated camera. And get the forward vector off of this. And get the right vector off that. So now, let me go ahead and run hot reload real quick. Okay, give it a try. I move forward. I'm turning and all that kind of stuff, and it makes no effect. So let's walk forward towards this, and we'll use our headset. So I walk forward, oh, walk forwards, turn right. Basically, the direction that I point my headset is the direction I move. So if you want to go that route, you can do so. So I'm probably going to add a toggle. Yeah, we'll go ahead and make that the next video. We'll add a simple way to toggle between the two. So we could use one or the other based upon which, obviously, which one we want to use. So we can see this returns a vector, and this returns a vector. So all we're going to have to do is just, depending on, we're going to have a simple if statement. Well, if else. And that's going to be what drives the rotation, or the direction we move. So for the time being, I'm going to control Z this and go back to using our motion controller. Because that's what I want to use. And then in the next video, we'll set up that toggle ability so we can use either our motion controller to control our direction or our headset. And we can control that simply in Blueprint. So that's going to be it for this video. And if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where obviously you get early access to all of my videos, as well as a Team Deathmatch series that is just for Patrons, where we use Unreal Engine with C++ to create Team Deathmatch with a couple of interesting features like weapon customization, custom spawning and all that fun stuff. And obviously, if you have any questions or anything like that, my Discord's linked down below as well, and I will try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.